Do you know how to add additional behavior on top of an existing class without actually modifying this class at all? In this video, I'm going to show you how to introduce caching on top of the repository pattern implementation that I talked about in a previous video without actually changing anything about the repository. I'm going to do this using the decorator design pattern and I'm also going to show you how you can integrate this pattern with ASP.NET Core dependency injection. Let's see how this actually looks in the code. We are going to start off from the member repository implementation and I want to focus on the getById method which is the method that returns the member by the ID from our database. Imagine that we want to reduce the load from the API on our database. A simple way to do that is to introduce caching between our API and our database so that we first check if the data is available in the cache before actually going to the database and fetching the data. This has two major benefits. It's significantly more performant. And the second is that we can greatly reduce the load on our database in hot paths in our application. I'm going to set a breakpoint at the getById method. And I want to show you that it actually works and we are returning some data from the API. I'm going to start the application and head over to Postman. In Postman, I already prepared a get request that is going to hit our API, specifically the endpoint for fetching the member by the ID. You can see we have the ID specified over here in the route. This ID is going to be passed to the repository and we are going to return the member with this ID from the database. If I send this request, we are going to hit the breakpoint inside of our member repository, which you can see here. We hit the breakpoint that I previously set and we are getting the ID that we specified in the route. I'm going to press continue and we are going to fetch this member from the database and return it as a JSON response. You can see that we get a very simple response here with the ID of the member and the email. If I were to send this request again, it's going to hit my breakpoint again. I'm going to hit the database one more time to fetch the member again and this will happen for every request in our application. So we want to introduce caching to reduce the load on our database, but we want to do that in a way that does not change the member repository in any way. So I'm going to start by creating another class in this same folder. This class is going to be called cached member repository. And this class is going to be our actual decorator. So I want this class to also be implementing the iMember repository. I'm going to quickly implement all of the methods. So how are we going to decorate our existing member repository? The simple way to do it would be to inject the member repository as a dependency to the cached member repository. I'm going to name the field holding the member repository decorated because this is the instance that is being decorated by the cached member repository and we are going to inject the member repository from the constructor. Now that I have the member repository injected, I'm going to use it to implement all of the methods on the cached member repository. In the getById method, we're going to return the decorated getById and pass in all of the arguments. We're going to do the same in the isEmailUnique method. So on the decorated member repository, we just call isEmailUnique and pass in the same arguments. And I'm going to do the same for the add and the update methods. So what I did here is I created a wrapper class around the member repository. And all this class does is it just calls the existing methods exposed by the member repository. We aren't introducing any behavior on top of the member repository, but it's very easy for us to do so. We can inject additional behavior between any of the method calls on the cached repository. And this is what we are going to use to introduce caching. I want our caching to actually work. So I'm going to use the iMemory cache that is available in ASP.NET Core. I'm going to inject the memory cache instance. All right. I want to use the cache inside of the getById method so that I first check if the value is present in the cache and if so, return it. Otherwise, go to the database, fetch this member, cache it first and then return the response. So how we are going to do it is I'm going to create a cache key here. I'm going to say members and pass in the ID and this is going to be our cache key. 
I'm going to temporarily get rid of the call to our decorated member repository and I want to return the memory cache and I'm interested in the get or create method. What this method does is it's first going to check in the cache if the value with the given cache key is present and if it is it's going to return it. Otherwise it's going to use the factory function that we provide as the second argument to actually create this value in whatever way that we decide then it's going to cache it and return from this method. So I'm going to pass in our key that we just defined as the first argument and I want to write a function that takes in a cache entry and returns a task of the item where the item is going to be our member. The memory cache that we have available in sp.net core supports expiration and I suggest that you use it so that you don't get stale values in your cache. I'm going to call a method on the entry object. The one I'm interested in is the set absolute expiration. And I'm going to pass in a time span, let's say from minutes. And we want to cache this value for two minutes, for example. Now that I set the expiration time on the cache entry, I'm going to call the member repository that we are decorating and just return our member by ID. So this is the implementation for the cached version of the getById method. This method is first going to check if the value is present in the cache and only if it is not, it's going to access the database. To make this work inside of sp.net core, we have to apply some configuration. I'm going to head over to program.cs and here I need to wire up the services to work with dependency injection. The first service that I need to add is our member repository. I'm going to register the member repository as the scoped service and I'm going to register the cached member repository as the interface implementation. So I'm going to say builder services add scoped i member repository and the implementation is going to be the cached member repository. So now when someone injects the i member repository from a constructor they are going to get an instance of cached member repository and if you recall, the cache member repository is injecting the member repository inside of its constructor. I'm going to show you in just a moment two different versions for how you can achieve the same configuration. But before that, let's first see if this is actually working properly. I'm going to set a breakpoint at the start of the getPID method in the cached member repository. We already have our breakpoint in our member repository and I'm going to start the application. Back in Postman, I'm going to send our get request again and I hit the breakpoint inside of the cached member repository which is exactly what I expected. So now we're going to create our cache key which is going to be member and the ID of the member that we are trying to fetch from the cache. The memory cache does not have a value for our key and if you try to step into the get or create method you're going to go inside of the factory function if you take a look at the cache entry instance here, you can see that it has the proper key value and that the current value for the cache entry is null. We are setting the expiration time and now we are actually fetching our member from the repository. Now we go inside of the member repository class, we fetch the member from the database. We now return the value from the member repository inside of the function for creating our cache entry. And here I'm going to press continue and we're going to return from our API. As you can see, we get the same member response as before. Notice what's going to happen now when I send this same request again. Again, we hit the breakpoint inside of the cache member repository, but this time we are not going to go into the member repository, which is the decorated class, which means we are also not going to call the database. We are just going to return the cached value that is already present in the memory cache. If I try to step into the get or create method, you can see I just go over it. We did not hit our member repository instance. And to be sure, I'm going to return the execution back here. Notice what's going to happen now. I'm going to set a breakpoint here inside of the function for creating our cache entry. And I'm going to press continue. What you all notice is that I won't hit this breakpoint because the value with this key is already present in the memory cache. As expected, we return from our API without calling the database. I want to show you the performance difference of this endpoint when we are hitting the database on every request 
and when we are hitting the database once and then returning the cache value on subsequent requests. I have the API running in the background and the member repository is going to hit the database on every request. If I keep sending this request to the API, every time I'm going to hit the database and you can notice that the response time is around 10 milliseconds. This is because I'm running the database on the same computer as the API, so it's quite performant. Now I'm going to switch to the cached version. I'm going to send the first request and the response time is going to be a little bit higher because this is going to be the first API request, so we do have a cold start. As expected, the response time is around 300 milliseconds, but watch what happens now. This request is not going to hit the database, but it's going to return directly from the cache. It's already 8 milliseconds, but if I keep sending the request again, it's going to warm up the API. And you can see that the response time is down to 3 milliseconds on average, where we had around 10 milliseconds when we were hitting the database on every call. So the performance is significantly improved when we introduce a cache to our solution. And this is a common performance optimization technique when building web applications. If you are liking this video so far, definitely leave it a like for the YouTube algorithm so that we can reach a wider audience. And also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I mentioned that I wanted to show you two more versions for configuring the cached member repository with dependency injection. The one I'm going to show you now is still going to rely on the native dependency injection that is available in ASP.NET Core. You can provide a Lambda function here that accepts a service provider as the only argument and constructs an iMember repository instance and returns it. What I'm going to do here is I'm first going to resolve the member repository from the service provider. I'm going to say provider get service member repository. So now I want to return an instance of the cached member repository. I'm going to say return new cached member repository and I'm going to specify the member repository as the instance. And I'm also going to resolve the memory cache from the service provider. So I'm going to say get service i memory cache. So this is another version of how you can configure the decorator pattern with ASP.NET Core dependency injection. This version is more involved, there's a lot more code, but you have a lot more flexibility for how you are resolving your services because you have access to the iService Provider instance here. I want to show you one more approach, which is going to use the popular library called Scrooter. What Scrooter does is it exposes extension methods on the iService collection, and one of those extension methods is decorate. I'm going to get rid of this cached member repository registration here. And I'm going to register our member repository the standard way with ASP.NET Core. And to apply the decorator with Scrooter, all you have to do is say builder, services, decorate. Specify the service that you are decorating. In this case, we want to decorate the iMember repository. And now you have to specify the decorator class, and this is going to be our cached member repository. And in the background, Scrooter is going to configure everything with dependency injection. The one change that you have to make to our existing implementation is because we are decorating the iMember repository here, inside of our cached member repository, we can't inject the member repository class, but we have to inject the actual iMember repository interface. And at runtime, Scrooter is going to provide the member repository as the implementation. I'm going to add a breakpoint here and show you how this works in action. I'm going to send the same API request from Postman. We hit the breakpoint inside of the cached member repository. This time everything was wired up using the Scrooter library. And if we take a look at the decorated instance here, notice that in the constructor we are injecting the iMember repository as the decorated instance, but at runtime we get the iMember repository implementation, which is the member repository service, which we are decorating here. So we get the same setup that we have before, but we are also injecting the same service that we are decorating on. I'm going to add a breakpoint here. Since this is the first request, we are going to hit the breakpoint and fetch the value from the database, which you can see here. I'm going to press continue, and this is going to return the value from the database through our API. Back in Postman, we have our response. And if I send the request again, we hit the same breakpoint. 
This time, if I press continue, we will not be hitting the breakpoint here because the value is already cached and we are just going to return the cached value from this method. And as you can see, we got the cached value back from our API. So this was the decorator pattern implementation with ASP.NET Core. Make sure to take a look at these two videos that you can see on the screen. And until next time, stay awesome.